In May this year, the United States announced that it would impose tariffs on a series of strategic products, such as electric vehicles and semiconductors from China. The European Union followed suit and also launched an anti-subsidy investigation on Chinese imported cars. Even Canada, which has always maintained a relatively stable trade relationship with China, has joined the ranks of restricting Chinese imports. In August this year, the Canadian Ministry of Finance announced that it would impose tariffs of up to 100% on Chinese electric vehicles and a 25% tariff on steel and aluminum products. Many people believed at the time that these harsh measures would deal a heavy blow to China's manufacturing industry. However, unexpectedly, less than a day after Canada announced these tax increase policies, China immediately responded strongly and launched four countermeasures in succession. According to industry insiders, one of the countermeasures may cause Canada to directly lose about 950 million US dollars. But what puzzles us is why Canada suddenly took tough sanctions against Chinese electric vehicles. What kind of counter sanctions has China launched against Canada now? If you like our video content, please click to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can receive all our latest video content. Now let's get into today's topic. We all know that with its huge price advantage, China's electric vehicles have been very popular around the world in recent years. Now, China's electric vehicle exports have spread to more than 180 countries and regions, covering almost the entire world, including Europe, Asia, Oceania, America, and Africa. According to data, China's total automobile exports reached 2.5 million in 2022, a sharp increase of 56.7% over the previous year. Among them, the export volume of new energy vehicles reached 680,000, more than doubling. Of course, China's new energy vehicles are also eye-catching in the domestic market. The production and sales volume in 2022 reached 7.05 million, and it has been ranked first in the world for eight consecutive years. By 2023, this momentum has not weakened, but has become more rapid. Data show that China's total automobile exports soared to 4.6 million vehicles that year, of which new energy vehicle exports reached 1.2 million, an increase of 77.6%, once again breaking the historical record. This strong growth momentum did not stop in 2024. Data show that China's automobile exports increased by more than 30% in the first half of this year, reaching 2.79 million vehicles. From these figures, it is not difficult to see that China's electric vehicles are not only popular in the global market, but also recognized by more and more consumers. However, it is worth noting that China's exports of new energy electric vehicles are mainly concentrated in developed regions such as Europe and the United States. Such rapid growth naturally aroused the vigilance and concern of Western countries. They began to worry that China's electric vehicles would gradually penetrate or even control their local markets by taking advantage of their price advantages. After all, the large-scale entry of Chinese car companies has already caused a considerable impact on the local automobile industries of these countries. In order to meet this challenge, the United States announced in May this year that it would increase tariffs on China's new energy electric vehicles from 25% directly to 100%. So after the United States began to sanction Chinese electric vehicles, the European Union followed suit and announced that it would launch anti-dumping and anti-subsidy investigations on Chinese electric vehicles and also impose tariffs of 17%, 19.3%, and 36.3% on major automakers such as BYD, Geely, and SAIC Group respectively. It is worth noting that after the United States and the European Union took action, Canada quickly followed suit and announced tariffs of up to 100% on Chinese electric vehicles. But here comes the problem. As the main export market for Chinese cars, it is reasonable for the European Union to follow the United States in taking these actions for the sake of protecting its local industry. But why should Canada, a country that mainly relies on the United States for automobile supply, join this action against China. 
As far as I know, Canada is the second largest sovereign country in the world, but in many policies, it always follows the pace of the United States. In July this year, when the Canadian foreign minister was invited to visit China, he repeatedly stated that he would not put pressure on China on the issue of electric vehicle tariffs. But surprisingly, just over a month later, in August 2024, the Canadian government suddenly issued a document announcing that from October 1st, a 100% tariff would be imposed on electric vehicles imported from China. Not only that, from October 15th, steel and aluminum products from China will also be subject to a 25% tariff, respectively. The scope of this tariff adjustment is very wide, including 23 tariff items for electric vehicles, 163 tariff items for steel, and 19 tariff items for aluminum products, totaling 205 items. As for why such high tariffs were introduced, the Canadian Ministry of Finance explained in a statement that this is a trade protection measure aimed at protecting the development of domestic automobile companies. According to data, Canada's automobile industry produces more than 1.5 million vehicles each year, contributing about $18 billion to GDP. Although Canada's automobile production seems considerable, according to the data, more than 90% are eventually exported to the U.S. market. Therefore, on the surface, the entry of Chinese electric vehicles does not seem to have much impact on the Canadian market. Judging from the import data, Canada does not import many electric vehicles from China. In 2023, the total amount of electric vehicles imported by Canada was about 7 billion U.S. dollars, of which 2.6 billion U.S. dollars was imported from the United States, while only about 41,000 vehicles were imported from China, with an amount of only 1.6 billion U.S. dollars. Moreover, most of these electric vehicles from China are Teslas produced and exported in China, and real Chinese local brand electric vehicles have not yet entered the Canadian market on a large scale. Therefore, if Canada claims that it is taking restrictive measures against China in order to protect its own auto industry, the reason is obviously not very tenable. As for why Canada suddenly introduced this policy, the reason behind it is actually not complicated. Just one day before Canada announced this decision, U.S. National Security Advisor Sullivan visited Canada and held talks with Prime Minister Trudeau. According to sources, Sullivan mentioned in the talks that he hoped Canada would keep pace with the United States in the field of electric vehicles and put some trade pressure on China. Therefore, as a close partner of the United States, Canada is likely to coordinate its position with the United States in this context and finally decided to take corresponding restrictive measures against China in the automotive field. However, everyone knows that China attaches great importance to the automotive industry, so they can't just suffer a loss in silence. Within less than 24 hours after Canada announced the sanctions, China launched four countermeasures in succession. Among them, the most eye-catching one is to launch an anti-dumping investigation on canola imported from Canada. China did this because these Canadian canola seeds themselves had quality problems and were considered not clean enough. In addition, the continued low price of Canadian canola seeds has formed unfair competition, which has brought huge pressure and losses to Chinese local canola companies, so China has sufficient reasons to initiate this investigation. According to relevant data, Canada is not only the world's largest rapeseed producer, but also one of the countries with the largest rapeseed export. In 2023, Canada's rapeseed production was about 18.3 million tons, of which 8.6 million tons were exported, 3.4 million tons more than the previous year, accounting for 51% of the world's rapeseed exports. Rapeseed exports not only bring rich economic benefits to Canada, but also create a large number of jobs. From the data we collected, Canada's canola industry contributes about $17 billion in output to the economy each year, while also providing about 250,000 jobs and bringing in $8.2 billion in wages. These figures clearly show that the canola industry not only plays an important role in exports, but is also the core pillar of Canada's agricultural economy and plays a vital role in employment and income growth. But in 2023, 
China imported a total of 5.49 million tons of canola, of which 5.05 million tons came from Canada, accounting for more than 70%. Among them, Canada's canola oil sales to China totaled $5 billion, an increase of 170% year-on-year. These data show that China is the largest buyer of Canadian canola. Now, China has only launched an anti-dumping investigation against Canadian canola and has not yet taken specific sanctions, but this has already caused market fluctuations. Domestic canola oil futures prices in China have risen rapidly, while Canadian canola prices have fallen sharply. According to Canadian media reports, Canola prices in several major agricultural provinces in Canada plummeted overnight, and the entire industry chain, from farmers to processing plants, felt a huge impact. If China eventually introduces a policy to restrict imports, it will be almost impossible for Canada to find a suitable alternative market in a short period of time, and those canola seeds may be unsaleable or even rot in the fields. At that time, Canadian farmers will face serious income losses, and the estimated loss amount may be as high as 950 million US dollars. In addition to launching an anti-dumping investigation into canola, China also announced a similar investigation into Canadian petrochemical products. It is worth noting that China is also one of the largest markets for Canadian petrochemical products. If China really restricts the import of these products, Canada's petrochemical industry will face huge challenges and it will be difficult to find alternative markets in a short period of time, which will deal a big blow to Canada's petrochemical industry. In addition, China has also taken Canada's violations to the World Trade Organization, accusing Canada of breach of contract through an international platform and using global public opinion to increase pressure. Even more striking is that China has decided to launch an anti-discrimination investigation against Canada, which is the first case of such an investigation in the world. It is worth mentioning that although the United States is Canada's largest trading partner, China still ranks second. If Canada continues to confront toughly and does not actively seek to improve relations with China, China is likely to introduce more restrictive measures. Since the epidemic, Canada's economy has not yet fully recovered. Many companies are facing the risk of bankruptcy due to poor management, and many business owners have also called on the government to take action to improve relations with China. In their view, only China's huge population market can help them get out of trouble and overcome difficulties. So here's the question. Do you think Canada will choose to mend fences with China, or will it continue to stick to its guns? To not miss out on our future projects and news updates, please make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. We will continue to provide you with more exciting and interesting content.